Hey there everyone. Today, I'm going to show you how to build this awesome raid farm. This raid farm works in Minecraft Bedrock 1.21 and in 1.20. Later in this video, I'll show you the little adjustment you need to make if you're playing in Bedrock 1.20. A shout out to Tenbo, the guy who designed this amazing farm. He is linked in the description. This easy to build raid farm will supply you with tons of emeralds, gunpowder, glowstone and redstone. You'll also get enchanted books, plenty of totems and lots of ominous bottles. By the way, later you can use these ominous bottles for my trial chambers key farm to unlock all the ominous vaults in the game. Link to the video is in the description. First, locate a pillager outpost with no hills or mountains nearby. Make sure there's a relatively flat area extending at least 150 blocks around the outpost. If you have a village within 150 blocks of the outpost, make sure to remove all workstations, beds and bells. Otherwise, this farm won't work. Start by placing slabs like this all around the outpost. One more thing. This farm is designed for a simulation distance of four, so you may need to adjust it based on your settings. Then fill in the gaps with more slabs like this. You can always switch the game mode to peaceful if you don't want to deal with mobs during the setup, but it might take away from your game experience. The choice is yours. Now, go up and place four temporary blocks on top of this stair like this. Then, place nine glass panes in this order. Once done, you can break the temporary blocks. If your game mode is set to peaceful, switch it back to normal or hard now. Move about 30 blocks away from the placed glass panes and wait for mobs to spawn. Switch between game modes if it takes too long to get mobs spawning. Now you can remove all unnecessary glass panes, but be sure to leave the ones around the mobs to prevent them from escaping. Before we continue, let's remove all the unnecessary blocks. As always, be sure to check the pinned comment for any changes and updates and feel free to join my Discord community. Close the gap for the stairs using blocks of your choice. Here's an easy way to determine where north is. Place a stone brick block and you'll see the T-shaped pattern. The larger section of the T always points north and mobs will spawn at the top left corner of this block. To ensure we have the correct corner, place four stone brick blocks beneath the mob. Check which block aligns with the top left corner of the large brick under the mob. After verifying, you can either replace the other three blocks or leave them as is. It's up to you. Now you can kill the mob and remove the three outer glass panes, leaving only the one in the center of the T-shape. Then place a soul sand block in this spot and then place glass blocks like this. Now empty a water bucket on top of the soul sand and the water will flow in this direction. Place a torch there to prevent zombies and other mobs from spawning later. Place a temporary block in the center and surround it with two high glass blocks like this. Remove the temporary block and as you move away, mobs should start spawning and get pulled into the water enclosure. You don't have to follow this step, but it's a great way to check if everything has been built correctly so far. As you can see, it's working perfectly. You can now go ahead and kill the mob. Now check the Y level from the floor because we need to extend the glass chute up by 35 blocks. My Y level is 82, so I'll need to extend the chute until it reaches Y level 117. First, seal the gap with a solid block, then place a door and place the glass blocks like this. Extend the glass on all four sides until you reach your target Y level, 117 in my case. When you reach the top, pour a water bucket down the chute. Swim back down and plant kelp from the bottom to the top to turn every block into a water source block. Break the kelp at the top and before swimming back down, place leaves to seal the gap. Break the kelp and leave the chute through the door. Remove the block, then close the door. The mobs will begin swimming upwards. If they get stuck, give them a single hit to encourage them to continue. Wait for them to drown. 
Next, break the door and place two glass blocks in its place. Then, add water to the lower three spots to create water source blocks. If done correctly, the water bubbles from the soul sand should boost you upwards. Break the leaves to exit, then replace them. Here's how the shoot should look now. Place another stone brick block on top of the leaves to confirm the correct orientation. On the north side, place two leaves like this. On the west side, place one leaf. On the south side, place 12 leaves. And on the east side, place 16 leaves. Afterward, fill in the outline with additional leaves. Replace these four glass blocks with leaves. Add more leaves on top of the existing ones. Place two leaves on the west side, one leaf on the north side, four leaves on the east side, and five leaves on the south side of the stone brick block. And once again, fill in the outline with additional leaves. Next, create a four by four glass block platform positioned one block inward from this corner. Cover the remaining area of the platform with leaves. Make sure to leave the stone brick block exposed. Now replace the stone brick block with a leaf block, waterlog the leaf block and then break it. Next place another water bucket against the glass like this. Build a wall of glass blocks around the edge of the platform and cover the gap with a temporary block. Next, place a water bucket against the glass block and remove the temporary block. Extend the glass wall by adding one more layer. And then place signs above each block as shown. Fill the entire area with signs, but leave these two blocks without signs. Add an additional layer of glass to the wall. And place a water bucket against this glass block. Next, place three fences above the glass block in this corner. Then cover the entire water with solid blocks, three blocks high. At this side, place a temporary block there, then place a piston pointing inward. Remove the temporary block and add four more pistons. Repeat this process on this side. Connect the pistons by placing three solid blocks between them. Down here, count three blocks inward and place four droppers facing upward. On top of these, position another dropper pointing in this direction 
and place one more in front of this dropper, pointing the same way. Temporarily remove these eight blocks and place three hoppers pointing into this dropper. On top of this hopper, place a slab and then add three leaves there. Leave a one block gap and then place four double chests like this. Add two more rows of double chests on top. On the back side, attach a hopper to each of the double chests. For the item filter place, six solid blocks behind these hoppers in this arrangement. On top of this block, place a redstone comparator like this, followed by three redstone dust. Then, add a redstone repeater like this, and a redstone torch there. Repeat this setup for the remaining three chests. Place a hopper pointing into each of the redstone comparators. Extend this row with three temporary blocks and place five hoppers pointing into this temporary block. Once done, remove the temporary blocks. Down here, leave a block gap and then place four more double chests like this. In front of this hopper, place a dropper facing this direction. Then place a chiseled bookshelf in front of the dropper like this. Connect three hoppers to these chests like this, followed by two more hoppers pointing down from the bookshelf. Place a temporary block beneath this dropper, then position another dropper pointing upwards. Place another dropper on top facing this direction. Remove the temporary block, then place a hopper pointing into this dropper. On the front side, attach one more dropper facing forward and place a chest in front of it. Then place four hoppers like this. On the back side of this double chest, place six hoppers aligned as shown. Get an allay to the top of the farm and give it any item to hold so it follows you. Place a rail on top of this hopper and put a minecart on the rail. Drop the same item that the alley is holding into this area below. Then move to the other side. The alley should pick up the item and get pulled into the minecart while trying to give you the item. Place three temporary blocks there and set an upper slab against this block. Position a piston facing downwards above the slab. 
surround the alley with additional temporary blocks like this and break the minecart and the rail. Then attach a lever to the piston and flick it. The slab should be pushed down towards the alley. Now remove the piston and the temporary blocks, leaving the slab in place. The alley will be trapped and can't escape anymore. You can now take away the item you gave the alley to hold. If you already have a totem, give it to the alley to hold. If not, you can do this later once the farm is operational and your first raid is complete. Place snow between the dropper and the alley. Then, in front of the chiseled bookshelf, place a note block. Below the note block, place a trapdoor and make sure it's closed. By the way, you can mute the annoying sound of the note block in your audio settings. Place a temporary block here and set a double chest there like this. Next to this hopper, place a dropper facing upwards. Set a cauldron on top of the dropper and position a hopper underneath this chest so it points into the dropper. Replace the temporary block with a hopper pointing into the double chest. This will be your trash chest where unwanted loot will be burned by the lava that we will be placing into the cauldron now. Under the chest, place a redstone lamp and attach a lever to it. Let's build the redstone for the trash chest by placing seven solid blocks in this shape. Place two more solid blocks there. Place a redstone comparator between these two blocks and set it to subtract mode. Next, add a redstone repeater between the two blocks. Finally, place two pieces of redstone dust there. Place three glass blocks in this area. Then add five more pieces of redstone dust to complete the circuit. Back on this side, place four glass blocks in this configuration. Then set a temporary block and place another glass block against it. Remove the temporary block afterwards. Next place two solid blocks there. Then place a temporary block there and one more solid block beneath it. Break the temporary block and attach a lever to the solid block. Up on top, place a redstone repeater like this, followed by a piece of redstone dust there and then a redstone torch against this dropper to set up the redstone clock. Flick the lever to turn the clock off. Add one more solid block there and extend the redstone dust like this. This lever will control the entire farm, while the trash chest has its own separate lever. Extend the redstone line by placing redstone dust on these five glass blocks. To set up the item filter, place an anvil and insert 64 items you don't need, such as dirt or sticks. Rename these items to anything you like. Take the renamed items out and then remove the anvil. You can place item frames with matching items at the upper chests for easier orientation. Alternatively, you can add signs and rename them. Now insert one renamed filler item into each of these four last slots and place at least 41 items you want to filter into the first slot of the hopper. Repeat this process for the other three hoppers. If you don't have 41 items, just add a few of them. The first slot will fill up to 41 items before the rest are sorted into the chest. In this chest, fill all slots except the first five with one filler item. If you already have ominous bottles, place them in the first five slots, arranging them from Bad Omen 1 
to Bad Omen 5. If you don't have any bottles yet, fill all slots with filler items and add the ominous bottles later. For Bedrock Edition 1.20, where ominous bottles are not available, use filler items in all slots. Place an item frame there, and if you have already an ominous bottle, place it inside the item frame, otherwise do it later. Now throw the first trident at this glass block, making sure it hits the corner of that glass block. Next, throw four more tridents at the center of each glass block and repeat the same process on the other side. For the best results, use tridents with the impaling enchantment. Don't worry if you're short on tridents, I've got you covered. Check out my trident bartering farm for an efficient build for tons of tridents. The link is in the description. Now break these leaves, but be careful not to get flushed down by the outflowing water. Remove the leaf block that holds the mobs in place, then seal the gap again. It's time to build the new home for our villager. Start by placing leaves in this arrangement. Next, determine the best spot to let scaffolding drop down. Place scaffolding five blocks above the platform and go get a villager to the outpost. Place a boat and get the villager into it. Attach a lead to the boat and climb up the scaffolding. When you're at the very top, jump down and the boat will be pulled onto the platform. Now, remove the lead and enter the boat to orient it sideways within the enclosure. Push the boat until it's fully inside the enclosure. Next, place some leaves there to keep the villager inside, then break the boat. Place leaves down here and remove the previous placed leaves. Finally, complete the enclosure by adding more leaves. Replace these two leaves with solid blocks and place a bed on top. The villager should link to the bed. This villager is already linked to the cauldron and the bed, but I didn't see any particles around the bed. I was confused for a moment, but don't worry, it's working fine. Now, go ahead and remove the excess scaffolding. Now cover the entire farm with leaves to make it spawn-proof. Just place leaves everywhere, as shown. Crouch while placing leaves on top of the bed to ensure the villager stays linked to it. Make sure to leave a one block gap above the slab and the note block when placing the leaves.
Don't forget to place leaves beneath this piston. If everything has been placed correctly, it should look like this now. To prevent our villager from turning into a witch during lightning storms, place a lightning rod 20 blocks above the farm. Build up 20 blocks from this spot and place the lightning rod on top. Afterward, break all the temporary blocks. If you're building your raid farm in a snow biome, build up 17 blocks from one corner of the farm and create a roof out of leaves covering the entire area. Make sure to remove all the snow that has accumulated on the AFK platform before starting your first raid. Now let's organize these chests. Place an item frame above these chests and for better access to this chest, you can also move this frame one block higher. Put an enchanted book in the first frame and a totem in the second frame. Place a sign to indicate when the trash gets deleted. When the lever is up, the trash clock is on and when it's down, it's off. Turn off the trash clock if you need to collect your first totem, ominous bottles and other items. It's time for your first loot run. Equip a sword with looting 3 for the best results. Flick the lever to activate the farm and hold the sword in your hand. Through this gap, the XP orbs will be able to reach you for collection. Once a captain, the one with the banner, is defeated, they will drop an ominous bottle, which is necessary to start the raid in 1.21. In 1.20, you don't need the bottles. The raid will start immediately and keep going until you finish the raids. If you haven't set up your filter for bottles yet, the first ominous bottle will end up in the trash chest. Occasionally, some items might be sent to the trash, even if they're supposed to be filtered. It's not a major issue, as you'll collect more than you need. However, you can always retrieve and sort these items manually if you'd prefer. Now, drink the ominous bottle to kick off the first raid. I'll time-lapse the raid so you don't have to wait. We've gathered a solid amount of emeralds, a few of the other items, and some enchanted books. There are already plenty of totems in the chest, and the trash chest has more bottles and items you can sort manually if you want. It's up to you. Now, you can also collect the totem from the trash and give it to your ally if you haven't already. Activate the trash clock to clear out the trash. Now use the collected bottles to set up the filter. During your next raid, the matching omen bottles will be sorted into this chest. As you can see, the trash deletion is working perfectly as well. Don't forget to flick the lever to turn off the farm when you're done. Thanks for watching. See ya.